Okay, welcome to my review of the Monoprice Maker Select 3D printer. Um, I'm going to be running some of this in double speed, just so you don't have to suffer through it. And uh, this is going to be an unboxing, assembly, and uh, pretty much just some thoughts on how the first couple prints have gone. Um, the uh, printer comes in a pretty hefty box with some nylon straps. Uh, I've already taken it out here because uh, no need to show that, but uh, you can see that this has some pretty hefty foam uh, insulation in this, uh, held in just with a couple of pieces of tape. Uh, it doesn't really need anything more than that. It's pretty well sized to the box, so it's not going to rattle around in shipping too much. Um, on top there, you also have uh, some instructions and a high gloss white and the first thing that comes out is the giant power brick that also contains the uh, all the wiring and the LCD display. Um, there's an another box in here that's got all the accessories that will go with it which we'll take a look at in a second individually. Get some more packing foam. I mean, there's no room for moving on this. This isn't going to move around and get broken. So what's not evident here is that um, pulling this out of the package is not the easiest thing. If you were to yank on any of those things, it would have probably just fallen out and hit the table pretty hard. If you weren't being uh, careful about it. Uh, the other thing that's not clear immediately is which end is up on the uh, tower there. And looking at it again, um, the motors are obviously towards the bottom. But... Um, on the first open, that's just not obvious. So at a glance, this is everything that came with this. We have the base, we've got the tower, power unit. We have the uh, the rack for the, for holding the roll of uh, either PLA or ABS. Power cable, USB cable with a very fancy shade. We have four screws that I'm assuming are going to be used to mount the uh, tower. We have some additional screws a clear tube in there, some zip ties, and some Allen wrenches. We have a sweet putty knife. And we have a brand new memory card, which is two gigabytes, it looks like. All right, time to get building. So the build itself is actually very, very simple. Um, the tower attaches the tower, the gantry, whatever you want to call it, it attaches with four screws to the base. The base sits on top of that ledge that you can see there at the top, uh, or the cross piece. Um, it's not a whole lot to it, it's just a matter of lining it up. Um, and just orienting everything properly. The whole thing is actually pretty stable once you have it together.
Alright, so the two screws on either side are installed and they're just kind of hand tight at the moment. Next step that um, this group of cables here, we're just going to snip the uh, zip tie. Without cutting the actual wires. There we go. So at this point, all you need to do is attach the different motors. Um, the instructions clearly outline which wire is going to go to which motor. And uh, the connectors just pop in. They can only fit one way, so it's a pretty straightforward process. bag of nuts. This is just going to sit here like this. A bag of bolts, I don't know why I said nuts. This one is certainly a bit tighter. Okay. With the spool holder installed, we'll then just power up the electronics brick and uh, then we'll start calibrating the gantry. Um, we'll take a look at that here. The first thing we're going to need to do here is pull the y-axis forward and then we're going to tighten all the wing nuts as tight as they can go, which is going to compress the board and bring it to its lowest point. Uh, from there what we're going to do is we're going to slowly um, raise or loosen each one to raise the board and bring it just within what they describe as a sheet of paper width from the uh, of space between the board or the sh the uh, bed, I mean, and the extruder. Uh, and that turns out to be an incredibly uh, vague description of what should be in there, and, and we'll get into that a okay. little bit later with the impressions. Um, but uh, this was pretty straightforward. I actually ended up doing this uh, two rounds of this. Um, coming back to the front as the rear end of it uh, 
popped upwards as it was going. Um, so. Now what you'll see here is that uh, we're going to bring the extruder down. Um, and we're actually going to run through the positioning and set everything to home all. And that's going to set everything up in the starting position. And there we go. Just about. It's important um, as you start messing with this and sliding sheets of paper under the extruder that you're not actually getting caught up on the screw that's right next to that home position. Um, that can be the source of some friction, but uh, you want to try to avoid that. So it's best to come from behind the extruder, as I figured out later on. And this is something that you're definitely going to want to take your time with and make sure you get it right because it is going to have a lot of effect later on when you are printing. If it's too close to the board, what it's going to do is cause uh, your, your prints to stick. And um, later on I found out that this is really, really bad. If I had to go back and, and loosen everything a little bit, um, when I destroyed the sheet of film, of uh, not film, but... Uh, the tape that layers the board um, with my second print. That was bad. Now applying the tape is actually no real big deal. You just want to go slow enough so that things don't get crinkled on you um, and uh, try to keep air bubbles to an absolute minimum. When the, uh, when the board actually heats up for the first time, you'll, you'll be able to push more of the air out of it if you haven't done that as you go. Definitely take uh, some care and use that putty knife to assist with that. It can really make things go quicker. Um, the second time around is actually much faster than this. All right, now we will uh, zero the board. We'll turn it on to preheat for PLA in my case, because that's what I'm working with. And then we'll uh, insert the filament. I had to take the fan here apart to get the filament to go through. It kept kicking back on me and um, the, the extruder just wouldn't pull it through any further, but once I popped it open, it was a clear shot and I was able to push it all the way through. So once that's set, um, you can go ahead and start printing. The uh, mini SD card comes preloaded with five or so models. Um, I grabbed the first or second one on there and it uh, looks like it's the Monoprice logo. So I just went ahead and printed that and that came out pretty well. Um, I'll insert some pictures here of it. And um, after that, I went ahead and did a print of the heater meter case, which is a um, just an enclosure for a Raspberry Pi project that I have. And I'll also um, append some pictures towards the back and you can see some video of that uh, printing out. But overall, um, you know, so far I'm very pleased with how this pr how easy this printer went together. I'd previously assembled a uh, original Prusa Mendel, I think it was, or no, a RepRap Mendel, uh, like three years ago. Um, something I didn't actually get to use, but I did assemble it. And uh, just pulling this out of the box, screwing in four screws, and uh, Basically, printing all within 45 minutes was uh, a huge, huge plus. Um, you know, obviously, I can't speak towards the longevity of everything, but uh, overall, pretty impressed. 
Um, the software that I'm using right now is the Cura software. It's um, it's pretty functional. Um, I've been able to learn it pretty well. Uh, the best advice I can give you is to definitely use a brim or a raft. Uh, brim if you're using a small uh, print and you can see that uh, that printed out under the or, or actually it was a raft that printed out under the butterfly but if you were doing something small uh, make sure you use a brim make sure you use the raft on the bigger prints um, I mentioned earlier that uh, the one, one of the elements of the heater meter case uh, stuck to the board to the point where I had to tear up the tape if I had done and selected the raft that would not have been an issue so uh, make sure you save yourself some heartburn and uh, print with a raft.